everyone, this is Ed, cbimagery.com. Today we're trying light painting. Uh, I was inspired by a photographer up in Canada but by the name of Eric Pare, a phenomenal artist, and I'm going to put his website right down here so you can go check him out. Please, please do. So Eric's a great example of a technique done right, but Eric's been doing it for a long, long time. This is going to be my first time, but we'll see what we can do. Eric's uh, kind enough to share some uh, techniques to get you started, so I've, I've looked at those, I've looked at his work. Uh, my challenge today is I'm actually going to try to light paint a person. Uh, I'm not really going to try to make a lot of just spirals in a dark studio, but to actually work with the model and uh, to see if we can get close to Eric's technique. Um, I also uh, am going to start out with just working with uh, flashlights, and I'll show you the tools in just a second. Um, and then towards the end, maybe we'll look to experiment with some light painting as well as uh, mixing in a strobe to see what we get uh, there. So join me with this journey uh, to together we can learn from each other. And um, next stop, I'll go ahead and show you some of the tools that I'll be attempting to use to a day as we light paint. Um, I thought I'd just take some time to show you today uh, some of the lighting tools that I will be using. Uh, these are really flashlights. Um, I've got two flashlights that I'll be using today. One's a smaller one. I think this is between 200 and 250 lumens. Um, I don't know if that's going to be bright enough, I hope, because this is going to be a lot easier to work with. Um, but basically it's got a bright mode, it's got a blinking mode, and it's got a softer mode. Uh, you can also zoom the light in and out. Uh, really nice little flashlight. Um, it's Big Brother. Is this bad boy? It's going to be a lot harder to work with, and I, I just think it's probably going to be too much light. Um, and uh, but again, it's got a bright, uh, it's got a blinking, and uh, it has a soft. I think it's about 1,600 lumens. So I have some neutral density gel um, paper that I thought I would work or use that if I have to with uh, this just to try to reduce the light output. Uh, a couple of other tools. Okay, some other tools that I've been working with. Uh, these are everyday gel sticks. You can pick them up everywhere. I don't know what a good gel stick or a bad gel stick is. Um, I've had these in my, my photo bag for a long, long time. Sometimes if I'm out shooting the Milky Way or something, I'll just break one of these out. Uh, but, you know, solid color, they go blinking too. Uh, I thought, you know, we could try that. Again, I don't know about the light output with that. This is called E-Wire. Um, Basically, uh, it's like a long strand. I, I think it's LED. But what you do is, if you can, um, you can shake it, you know, like that. It actually creates sort of this like light fuzz. It's actually a pretty cool effect. Um, it has a, a, a blinking mode too. And uh, so I got some blue and I got some orange. I already broke one of them. Uh, and so I've tried to tape it a little bit just to wrap it around because I think they're, they're not made probably most expensive way, um, so you want to buy some extra, but these are really cheap, they'll run you about four bucks on eBay, these are about, about the same. Uh, the other stuff that I'll be using will really be, uh, here's some other little, you know, this is some strands I got from eBay, they sort of like light up, Let's see what happens with that. Uh, got another flashlight again. Not too deep bright, but it's sort of small. We'll see what happens with that. Got some gel paper, any type of gel paper. Um, got some of these papers at Michael's Art Supplies, so any art, art supply. Um, just sort of um, right, so the flashlight. Uh, the idea here, you know, would be that you know we may sort of put the light in like that and go over someone's body with it. Um, so I thought that may or may not give some effect, uh, some uh, different colors, okay? Um, so you can try that. Um, Falling apart here, that's a, a big gel thing right there. And then I've got, uh, on Eric Pare's website, um, he has some tutorials, and on one of the tutorials, he talks about how we create some of his effects. So this is some neutral density paper that I've created this shape with. Uh, idea there, uh, if I could put it in like a blinky mode, sort of go like a, this um, over someone. So I pulled that off of this website. And another tip he had 
was to actually shape the uh, paper itself into some interesting shapes. You can do this in a variety of like different ways, but this sort of gives it a nice little wand effect and sort of shapes the light as it comes uh, out. So uh, we'll try all these techniques, see what works, what doesn't work for us today, and uh, see what happens. All right, talk a little bit about uh, my, my strategy with the camera. Um, shoot with a 5D Mark III, a 16 to 35 mil lens. Um, I just thought I'd go, you know, maybe a little wide here just to start with. Um, the, the challenge I'm going to have is keeping someone sharp. So there's sort of two things I have to think about. One is the shutter time, because I'll really be working with ISO um, and aperture here um, and uh, shutter. So if I'm working with a person, probably about the longest I'm going to be able to keep that shutter open is probably going to be around a second, uh, maybe a little bit more. Uh, is what I'm thinking. It might even be less. So if I sort of lock down my shutter time at say one second, then um, I'm going to look at the aperture and the ISO and try to get something interesting on the exposure side. On the aperture, I was thinking I'm probably going to start out around five six. Uh, might go up to eight. See what happens. Uh, probably start with my ISO at about 400 and uh, work between 400 and 1600. Uh, it's a fairly clean camera, as most of you know, so if I can keep within that uh, range, uh, the shutter around a second, and work within, say, 5 sex uh, to f8, uh, we'll see what happens and sort of have a wide lens. Um, I also thought that it's going to be hard, um, of course, to keep running back and forth to the shutter. It's not going to be possible, so I have an intervalometer for some of the time lapse work that I did, it's uh, wireless, and I thought that I would try that. Um, it's a cool little system, it's a Saatchi, Saatchi, um, fairly common. Um, so my strategy there was to think that, you know, I know that there's a timer on the camera. If I move that to say two seconds, um, turn that on here, move that to two seconds, um, and sort of hear it. The idea was if I could sort of even put it on a time-lapse mode where I have an interval of say four seconds, that's uh, uh, four seconds, I got one second for the exposure, two seconds for the pre-worn, one second to you know, grab something that's by me or, 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 or something else. If that can work, that can help the model and I integrate and coordinate maybe a little bit better. So uh, we'll see if this uh, works here. Okay, now I think we got it. So I got a one second exposure, F8, ISO 800, and it's going off. So that should give us some time to work and just get into a flow. Okay, uh, the other challenge um, that I know I'm gonna have is um, keeping myself out of the exposure. And the only way to do that is really uh, to get some black clothes, uh, to shoot in a pitch dark studio, and you know try to shoot far outside, and uh, at least try to have a black background. So I've got a black backdrop set up for the shooting space um, for keeping the light off as much as possible for me. I've got a couple of strategies there. Um, sort of have a black uh, shirt here that I can put on uh, that'll cover my uh, arms. Uh, I've got a pair of black gloves, um, you know, that I can put on in case my hands start to light up. I got some black socks uh, I can put on that too. And I've got sort of this baklava, sort of like a skiing deal. Don't have much use for this here in Phoenix, but I have one uh, for when we go outside doing some night shooting during the winter and stuff like that. And then worst comes to worst, I've got this black hoodie. Uh, that I can use. So I think that should be good enough to try to reduce the light coming on me. Anything that does happen, I can probably take out and post. Uh, but that's sort of another thing that you want to think about if you're going to do this light painting. Because uh, you know, you're going to be behind a person, maybe going even in front of them, and uh, you want to really keep that light off of yourself as much as possible. Well, just giving a look at the light setup uh, here. So 
backdrop, just sort of black. Got the camera. Obviously, you're going to need a tripod. Uh, you can't do this without a tripod. Uh, it's going to be impossible. So you have to have a tripod. Got a nice sturdy one here. Um, that'll be the shooting area. Now, the other strategy that I thought that I would employ um, to, um, you know, help the model be as stationary as uh, as uh, possible is to. Uh, put her on the floor to start with. Uh, you know, if someone's sitting or laying, they're going to be more stable just in a natural way. Uh, the other thing, if I can't get any of this thing to work, I think that I can probably start combining some light painting techniques. I've got sort of a beauty dish set up here as a fallback, and I can just go on to bulb mode, do some light painting around the person, and then uh, freeze them in with the uh, strobe light. So that's something that I'll look to try and see if that'll work. And if none of that works, then none of that works. Uh, but anyway, that's sort of the pre-prep uh, going around. And next is just to get the model here and uh, to start testing this stuff. Hey, hi, it's Ed. Uh, Taryn, the lovely model is here, or maybe victim. We don't know yet. But we're actually going to start the light painting process right now. And what I'm going to do is just sort of work with her. We're going to try to get her breathing down and synchronization and uh, do some test shots and see if we can get this light thing going. So that'll be the process for the next couple of minutes and uh, we'll be back later. Thanks. light. My last session, uh, that was hard. Uh, this stuff is even harder. It gives you a real appreciation for guys like Eric Parry and, and just where they've taken the art form. It really, really does. Um, so we didn't really get close to Eric's work, <laughs> but uh, where we wound up is we actually started doing some really long exposure stuff and uh, having some fun. Uh, you know, we played with some e-wire. Um, you guys will see that in the footage. Um, we um, you know, just started doing some long exposures, like 20, 30 seconds, and doing different lights and things like that. And then we would freeze uh, Terran with um, a flash of strobe. And I just triggered that flash manually um, 
from a pocket wizard. Uh, I wasn't connected to the camera, shutter, or anything like that. I just sort of popped in whenever I wanted to. And then Jordan, a uh, friend, helped me out, and he just shut off the, um, the uh, bulb mode. So uh, one thing that I just wanted to share that I found that really worked amazing were these uh, papers. Um, I think what they're called is recollections. They're cardstock, and you know this is sort of a, a rainbow. This is sort of like a sparkly. Um, you know, you put your flashlight in and you sort of fold it. Uh, worked awesome. Uh, it's really cool. Some awesome uh, e effects. The biggest challenge was getting enough light on the model's face if we were lighting her just with you know the flashlight. Um, so I think my other issue that I sort of learned was that I don't think my flashlight really had enough lumens. I think you really need like a 300 lumen flashlight. Um, I know a lot of people like a small. We tried working with the large light. We almost had too much light going there, and that thing is so hard to sort of work with. It's awesome for painting the side of a cliff, um, but it's sort of hard working in a small confined environment with an actual person. So I think if it, one piece of advice, uh, definitely get these type of sparkly card stocks. Again, Arts and Crafts Store, Michaels, uh, create some awesome the effects. Uh, that was our biggest challenge, was getting light on the model's face. And then, of course, we ran over a second, we tried two seconds, and then, of course, you know, the body starts to move, and it's really hard. So, again, we wound up just sort of popping everything with uh, flash, but in doing those long exposures, we started to combine a lot of different lighting techniques. Um, I don't know how good the image is going to really be. Uh, we probably had a little too much going on, but, you know, in terms of just learning and getting a flavor for how this stuff works, I uh, thought everything came out well. So, anyone has any tips or uh, tricks they'd like to share, please leave some comments. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. I'll do my best to get back to you and answer them. And with that, we've concluded our experimentation and how to like the university. Thanks.